defensive class that you brought in? Yeah, I mean, we worked hard at it, you know, and you know, it just it's a continuous effort that you keep getting the right pieces in here, and um, you know, we just we want to keep making strides and the type of players we're bringing in here, and I think this class helps us with that, and just a continuation of the process of, you know, today in college football, there's just so many avenues that you can use, and we just got to continue to dig and continue to put the right pieces in place. I feel like this is a relatively complete class, just you know, on paper, it hit every level of defense. Yeah, we try to find balance. I mean, every year, um, I think we've done that, and you know, now it's about just getting them here and getting back to work. You know, and you know, feel really good. I mean, we, we've got some real impactful guys. You know, and you know, last year we were very heavy in this state. Um, this year we took a few kids from outside the area. You know, KJ and Blake especially, and you know, just. You know, it feels good having really good relationships with some of these guys and be able to finally get them here and get them in the lineup. Looking forward to working with them. Mike was really, really excited about getting Blake uh, from the West Coast. What does he bring from your perspective as a linebacker? You know, he's tremendous. He just, you know, his skill level is so high. And, you know, credit to Blake. I mean, he was out here a bunch. And, you know, that wasn't an easy trip for him. Uh, but he's a dynamic playmaker. You know, and he fits us personality-wise. Uh, but to see what he did with the ball in his hands this year is just, you know, his numbers were video game-ish, you know. So that's the type of linebackers we like to have, you know, just the athleticism and the playmaking and just his personality and his family. They're really good fits for us. There's a lot of guys in this class that have played both sides of the ball in high school or wherever they've been before they got here. Is that something that's extra attractive to the staff because it gives you a bigger football sense? Or is that because I think, they're the best athlete on the field? Yeah, I think it's real at DB. You know, like you, you look at Jabril Rawls, uh, you look at Quindarius and, you know, what he can do. You know, Edwin for sure. You know, it just – Edwin, you know, he was somebody that we were recruiting as a wide receiver for a little bit. Coach Norbell asked me to take a look at his film, and most of it was at wideout, but – just his aggressiveness when he runs routes and how he is around the ball. Um, I went to Mike immediately and I said, yes, he, he could play DB. And um, as we said that and kind of brought it to him, he was excited about it. And, you know, Shaman and I had won a state championship. You know, he was put in a position to play DB this year. And he just looks really natural running and tackling guys. And, you know, I think he could play corner. I think he could play nickel. Um, he could probably play safety, you know, but. Edwin personifies what we look for in a DB, um, and some of those other guys do too. What kind of response do you look for for players that might be able to play both sides and you approach them and say, hey, you might be a better fit here? I don't know if I'm looking for a response per se. I just, you know, most players say, coach, whatever I need to do. Um, but some guys are honest with you. You know, I, I'd really liked, like to be this, or I'd like to do that, or I'd like to do both. I mean, that's usually the easy answer for them. Um, you know, I, I just, I think kids take it as a compliment, you know, when the other side of the ball calls them and say, listen, I, you know, I, don't, I take it in a way like, listen, I think you're super um, dynamic on offense. You know, these are the traits. And I think if, as long as you're very specific with telling them why you think the, the move to the side of the ball would be beneficial to them, most of them are pretty, um, pretty open to it. Did you uh, talk to Josh about Daryl? Obviously, you know, that's something that there's an off-the-field element to it as well. He wants to be closer to home. But did you yes. talk to Josh Farmer about potentially t uh, teaming them up again? Yeah, you know, my first trip as the defense coordinator at Florida State was to Gadsden County. Um, and I saw a young Josh Farmer and saw a young Daryl Jackson and uh, a little bit older Corey Fuller. You know, so I saw all those guys. And uh, we were able to get on Josh. You know, Corey had already told us that he thought Daryl was really going to develop. Um, and he just blew up, you know, and just credit to him and the work he put in. And, you know, he was definitely somebody that we knew about uh, in the portal last year. Um, didn't work out. Um, but this time around when, you know, he said he wanted to move closer to home, you know, we didn't, we didn't blink. You know, we needed to definitely bring a big physical force in the middle, and Daryl fits that. Um, but I think he's got a lot of athleticism to him too. So he fits what we look for. You know, and him having a relationship with Josh is is very beneficial because now he comes into that room and you know, Josh is really close with those other guys, and so it just brings in instant relationships, which is going to help Daryl transition. Also, like about the line class that you brought in, you guys have a lot of versatility. 
yeah, you know, and that's definitely a position we're never going to stop recruiting, you know, and you know, we'll build that room and we'll continue to build that room. But you add Daryl, which is an instant impact player. I think KJ Sampson is one of the better defensive tackles in the country. And um, to see him, you know, commit to us through this thing and go win a state championship. And, um, you know, he had to go through his process too at the end. Uh, but for him to believe in Coach Hagens and us, you know, it was, it was important. You know, and then to be able to get boots and Jane Jones, I mean, both those guys are, you know, we think dynamic edge players. So looking forward to getting them all in here. Boots, uh, Mockery Jr. was the first one to have the uh, NLI process uh, for the announcement. Is that a coincidence being a legacy or is it uh, he was just uh, up early now? I just think Boots is, you know, Boots is whatever you tell him. To do. I mean, he's a super disciplined. Lamont's done a great job with him. and. You know, just see his development at Gulliver Prep over the last couple of years. You know, he was a rangy, athletic kid that had some get off. Now he's developed into a legitimate kid of 235, 240 pounds coming in. And so, and he's still got a bunch of room to grow. But, you know, his burst and athleticism, his ability to finish around the quarterback, he's got great balance and athletic ability for a long kid. So, you know, he told me he would be first, and he was right. Any Good. other uh, comments that you got this year that might have sounded a little bit different because the results on the field was in a little bit different, some of the conversations, because now the kids can see the proof of uh, you know, what's happening in Tallahassee? Yeah, I think they're excited. I think the state's excited. You know, I feel it from the high school coaches. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, the kids have to fit us, and we need to fit them. And I think success draws a little bit more attention, but you still got to go through the evaluation process. And, just because we have success and more kids want to come, we still got to make sure they're right for us. And um, feel pretty confident on both sides of the ball that the class we signed you know, are the right guys for us. Because you know, for the most part, there were no quick signees. You know, other than the portal additions. But even with the portals right now, you know, Daryl Jackson has been a, a long time in the area relationship with our current players. So you know, we feel really good about you know just. The, the long-term results of what this class is going to be. Coach Norvell said the spreadsheet for handling recruiting these days is a massive one just because there's a lot of concurrent things that you have to consider. Uh, what's it like for you? And, and on a day like today, how is it different than it was four or five years ago where you got guys coming in that are voted by college players and the old school high school class? Yeah, I think this used to be the sigh of relief ending to a cycle. It doesn't really end anymore. You know, it's just, you know, we've got this open period, the fourth through the eighth that's coming up. So you're constantly recruiting for that. We'll have several guys on campus for that. And it's just, you know, it used to not stop because the next class was ready. Now you're currently still recruiting this, this class um, because of transfers, because of the continuation of high school recruiting. So it just, there's, there's no lulls to it. You know, so you just gotta be prepared to, always be evaluating and then once you evaluate correctly you got to recruit the right way between that and the bowl prep do you get a break tonight you give yourself a little bit of time to decompress and raise it right back to no i mean we're just we're still trying to set up good visits for that fourth weekend um you know trying to make sure the guys are able to get in here early the guys that just signed we're getting the right information now and then we got meetings tomorrow morning get ready for this bowl game so just trying to move forward with that thanks appreciate it